We covered every street in town. There's no sign of Sophie. Are you sure we can't go to the police? Lucard has agents everywhere, Max. We can't risk him finding out that Sophie's a, a vampire. If he found her and turned her against us, I can't imagine anything more terrible. When I think about what she could be doing out there, it drives me crazy. Me too, Chris. But we just have to hope that, vampire or not, Sophie's basic good nature will prevent her from doing any harm. Miss Ringhoff? Hello, Miss Ringhoff. Sophie? My goodness. I haven't seen you in ages. Not since I kicked you out of my classroom two years ago. No one could possibly know as much as you seem to think you knew. Their heads would explode. I'm sure I wasn't as bad as you remember. That smug smile whenever you were right. An impossible girl. Well, I think you'll find I've changed. It's too late to charm me, Miss Metternich. As far as I'm concerned, you're nothing but an old slyboots. Miss Ringhoff? I'd really like to thank you. What for? For making this even more fun. The Dark Ages were wonderful years for me. Wherever one went, there was one sort of plague or another. Death was everywhere. I was young and the world was beautiful. Ah, Sophie, may I present Mrs. Fenning, my new business manager? How do you do? Very well, thank you. I have a surprise for you, Sophie. A harpsichord for me? It's not the harpsichord, my dear, it's you. Now that you're a vampire, your learning curve has just shot off the chart. Why, Mrs. Fenning, have I misjudged you? I thought my new business manager was all facts and figures. I uh, used to listen to that piece with Harry, my late husband. Uh, Mr. Rukard, I had me doing an inventory of your, your art collection, and uh, you must say, I find it, well, sheer extravagance, uh, excessive in the extreme. You're, you're tying up hundreds of billions of dollars that, properly managed, could realize enormous dividends. If I may be so frank. Indeed, you may, Fenning, to a point. One thing you must realize, I have always preferred excess. You are playing beautifully, Sophie. I'm incredible. What are you two so engrossed in? We're reading about an attack. An old lady was mauled by a wild animal last night. Or at least that's what they say it was. It's Miss Ringhoff. You know her? She was Sophie's history teacher. Oh, great. Sophie always said Miss Ringhoff hated her. She dreaded going to her class. You think Sophie could have? It's possible. Apparently, Miss Ringhoff has no memory of the attack. That's the good news. For Sophie's sake, I mean. At least no one will be hunting for her but us. Well, I managed to purify some water from the packet spring. So? Well, we know that Sophie was bitten by a vampire with a rare antigen in his blood. Vincent. Mr. Poetry. Yes, and Lucard himself became ill after biting Vincent. This water was the only thing that saved him. It contains an element that reverses the effect of the antigen in the bloodstream. So you mean it saved Lucard because it changed him back into his natural state? Yes, as a vampire. It's possible that process may work both ways. You think it might kill the vampire effect that Vincent gave Sophie? And return her to a normal state as a teenage girl, yes. 
It wouldn't work for every vampire, of course, only for those with the specific disorder that Vincent has. And I don't even know if it will work for Sophie. But it's our only chance. I take it you received my message? I don't know. I, I... I just... Something seemed to call me. Telepathy. Your new sense. In time you'll come to master it. What are you doing here so early? Taking care of Lucard's excesses. He makes the most venturesome investments and then virtually ignores their performance. Someone has to worry about that. Miss Fenning? Why did you send for me? You and I, Sophie, have something in common. We are both underappreciated. I don't understand. Lucard sees you, and please forgive me for saying so, as his pet project. Of course, he's fond of you, as people are of their pets, but he has no intention of including you in his business. Yes, he will. Why shouldn't he? Sophie. My husband died last year. He was the vice president of a bank. Well, he had the title. I did most of the work. As his secretary, of course. I was the brains. They fired me when Harry died. I begged them to let me take over his position, but no. I was just a middle-aged secretary to them. Lucard is no different from all those bank executives, Sophie. He doesn't really take us seriously, but if we work together, he'll have to. What are you saying? Well, the gang's all here. I want to hear all about your night on the wing, Sophie, but first, about that postcard. They should have it by now. <clears throat> Dear old friends, I'm having a wonderful time at the castle. Wish you were here. <laughs> Excellent. That was a wonderful idea, Sophie. You're developing a fine, dark wit. Well, none of Sophie's friends have seen her lately. They're all alive, for one thing. My greatest fear is that she may have left the country. If that's the truth, we may never see her. Oh, you guys! Morning mail's in! And it's from Sophie. Dear old friends, I'm having a wonderful time at the castle. Wish you were here. And of course, you'll be promoted. Once Ducard is gone, I'll give the two of you the gift of vampire life. Now listen to me. You must bring me a length of chain. Make it a nice, strong gauge. Ten or twelve feet. Then you're to prepare two wooden stakes. Well balanced so they can be thrown with accuracy. Enjoy your reflection while you can, my dear. I'm afraid it won't be long before you don't have one anymore. Now remember, your target this evening must not escape. When I pay good money to bribe a politician, I expect him to stay bribed. I want to send a clear message to his colleagues for future consideration. Don't worry. I'm so excited. I love the shade of red. Won't show up as much if he spatters. <laughs> Alexander? I am nervous. About tonight, I mean. Let me tell you what Napoleon said. Thumb on the blade and strike upwards. That's for knifing someone. Vampires don't use knives. Well, you mustn't be so literal. He meant that one should always have a plan. Be quick, efficient, and merciless. 
Remember, Sophie, if this enemy escapes, it will displease me very much. And I know you don't want to do that. I would never do anything to displease you, Alexander. Quickly, there's much to do. Be careful, you fool. That's holy water. I'm sure I look rather fine this evening. But alas, I have no way of proving it to myself. Why, Helsing, what an expected pleasure, though we really must try to see less of each other. I want Sophie, now. Oh, it's me, Chris, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember. This one's mine! Try and catch me, Chris! Well, you said he was yours. What are you standing around for? to be straightforward and efficient, Mr. Lucard. In doing the books, I'm murdering the boss. You know, when you first took me on, I was delighted. There was nothing left for me in this world with Harry gone. But when you brought me over to this further side of life, Lucard... Peter, stop her! You brought my ambition with me. I created you! And a vampire's will. You as my child. A vampire's thirst for blood. Your blood, as it turns out, look hard. Stop Fine show of loyalty, Peter. Well done. Would you get that for me, please? You know, Peter, I have a funny nature. I've never had a sufficient appreciation of loyalty, especially when it comes so late. <laughs> Those girls aren't vampires. You can run, but you can't hide. Why, Mrs. Fenning? I thought you'd left us. I would have, but uh, where would I go? There is nothing left for me anywhere. Besides, you would have found me eventually and killed me. True. I'm like that. And what have we here? A toast. Let us drink to your victory. And to my late husband, whom I'm about to rejoin at last. I'm impressed, madame, such civility in the face of death. 
Ah, 47 Margot from my own cellars. A noble wine to noble deeds, Mrs. Fenney. <laughs> Is something wrong, Mrs. Fenn? You should be dead by now. Now, that's not a very nice thing to say. Damn you. I put holy water in that wine. Oh, I don't think so. 47 Margot has an unmistakable bouquet, one I know well. Watered down, it's just not the same. You are a devious sort, aren't you, Fenning? You couldn't have switched glasses. I would have seen you. Vampires are an especially nimble species, quite adept at sleight of hand. We would make very good magicians, for instance. Poor Fenning. If you'd spent less time plotting to destroy me, you might have learned that for yourself. I have you at my feet at last. So it's me. Please don't kill me. Kill you? I could never do that. I'm gonna make you live forever. You wouldn't believe what a kick it is to be undead. To be eternally young. Sort of like Peter Pan, except with fangs. So I love you. Of course you do, Chrissy. And when you join us, we can be young and in love forever. Then you love me too. Of course I do, Chris. So if I'm crazy about you, if I gotta be a vampire to be with you, then that's what I'll do. Come here. We'll be together always. But I, I gotta know you mean what you say. So before you do it, kiss me first. I'd be delighted. <laughs> Self-conscious. What have you done to me? It's water from the pocket springs. Uncle Gustav said it could cure you. No! Chris! No! What happened? I thought I could save her. She's recovering. Chris, you've done it. <laughs> All right, but what'd you do? I kissed her. All I did was kiss her. <laughs> Come on, let's get her home. So I figured if I could get you away from the castle, away from the car, I had a chance. Then I had to convince you to kiss me. Not that it took much convincing. <laughs> so, um, it was all just part of your plan? All those things you said? Even the kiss? No, I meant every word of it. So did I. <sighs> Forget it. They'll go away. Hang on a sec, guys. I'll get it. Chris, 
I think you should come to the door. I'm busy. Take a message. No, Chris. I really think you should come to the door. This will take just a sec. Surprise! Alexa, I thought you were still back in Philadelphia. I missed you so much. Mm. Why, Chris, aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? I can explain. Go ahead, then. Explain. Yes. Explain. Actually, I wouldn't mind hearing an explanation myself. Bro? 